Okay. <clears throat> How to weave together Good Shepherd Sunday and Earth Day. Well, the, the Good Shepherd gospel text was the one that I had at my ordination and at my installation here. That's good. Shepherds work a lot around the earth with earth creatures. That's good. The Good Shepherd created the church, and now the church stewards the earth. Hmm. Maybe I can talk about the church that we're part of and how it stands towards the earth. Good. Okay. Now that we got that figured out, did you know that our denomination, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, has an official social statement to the public on the creation, the planet, and our environment? Essentially a theological puzzle piece that fits snugly right into Earth Day. I know all of you already knew that and know it by heart, but I'm going to read a little bit about it. It's a statement that illustrates our commitment to our human home and habitat and identity as God-appointed caretaker, or maybe gardener, of the earth. And it says, human beings are made to care for the earth as God cares for the earth. This is what it means to be made in the image of God. When Genesis speaks about human dominion, it does not mean we have a special privilege to exploit the earth for ourselves, but a special responsibility to serve and keep the earth for the good of all. Human beings are made to imitate the way God keeps and cares for us as a servant king, Philippians 2.7. Moreover, we are to order human activity according to God's wisdom in creation, something that science and technology can help us discover. In other words, we are a community of folks who are invited and welcomed into utilizing what we have been given by God, tools, technology, knowledge, and relationships with others. We use those things to help care for each other and for the place where we all call home. We don't have another one. There's some folks who are working on buying another property on Mars, but that, we're not there yet. So this is what we got. People seem to connect last week with that theme of invitation and welcome and community, so I thought I'd bring a little bit of that forward into, uh, into today, wanted to expand a bit and deepen it and weave together these different themes along with Good Shepherd and Earth Day and also the aspect of community of belonging. Belonging is that next level that you reach after finding community and being welcomed in, and once you feel that little tug around your heart that you want to stay here a while, you feel that you want to belong. We're going to have an opportunity for that to be put into practice next week with some new member activities. But this whole sense of belonging, it's something that we as social creatures creatures that were created to be social. Not all the time. We, we have our introverted moments, those times that we need to retreat and rest, like on the seventh day, right? But by and large, we found that we humans need at least some social time, some time where we get to connect with our fellow creatures. 
both human and otherwise. My grandma really preferred dogs to people, so <laughs> that's why I say creatures, human and otherwise. <laughs> But let's put it out there plainly. Us human creatures, we don't always get along. Especially times like the next six months where we are building up to an election. Something that we're all... Well, I'll leave that to you. Um, It's a high-tension season of factions and divisiveness, where we are told that the concept of belonging just doesn't belong unless you ascribe to the right tribe or clan or party or the right sheepfold. Then you belong. Everyone else? No, no. But let's also be clear. Now that I've said that P word, politics, nothing I say from this pulpit or this position will be from a place of politics. Independents, Republicans, Democrats are welcome here and belong here. Donkeys, elephants, sheep, Goats and, I don't know, alpacas are welcome and belong here. Nothing that is going to be preached, that's that other P word, is politics. It's about people. Another good P word. It's all about belonging to God's people. Now, a lot of those politics things have taken those people things and kind of said, no, this is ours. We own this. But I would say that Jesus says that all of that stuff is belonging to the people, not to politics. I believe one of my uh, interim predecessors brought this three-word concept forward to you all. Uh, belong, behave, believe. Does anyone remember those three? Uh, A couple back there, good. Well, even if you weren't here when they brought that up, what does that kind of three-word combination mean to you? Belong, behave, believe. What does it it strike you as, just kind of off the cuff? I know I don't always ask questions, but sometimes I do. (laughs) Oh, a pop quiz we're uh, right, oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> well, be ready. Here we are. What does it mean to belong, behave, and believe? We should be consistent. Hmm, I like that. Hmm? Be bold. Hmm. Or as Martin Luther might say, sin boldly. <laughs> Don't do it half. That's right. Go hard or go home. Mm-hmm. Because right. we get forgiveness freely. Yeah. Listen. Hmm. Yeah. Good. Yes. How about kindness and humility? Kindness and humility. Good. Good. Be bold in your listening and being kind and humble. Yes. Back in the back. Faith and action. Hmm. Yes. Well, it's open to new things and ideas, yeah. I hope that you remember all those things and keep hope in these next six months or thereabouts. It's going to continue after that too, but it's going to reach a fever point. A lot of what's going to happen in this next season of politics is going to try and pull on you in different ways. Going to try and pull on your hope and your faith and your belonging together. 
They're going to say that, well, you sit in that pew and you sit in that pew. So you don't belong together. But here comes the good shepherd to tell you otherwise. What does all that, those three words, belong, behave, believe, mean? To me, when I heard that, it means belonging goes further and deeper than just inclusion. It's being informed by behaving and adhering and listening and having faith in action and being kind and humble adhering to the community guidelines and trust that we've put up together so that believing can happen unimpeded. Jesus had a way of uniquely instilling all of these three things in those he befriended and uniquely irking those who refused to befriend him. In Jesus' own words in the gospel, Jesus calls us his own. We sometimes move past those two little three word, three-letter words. But Jesus calls us his own. And I think this is using belonging not as a belonging to, but rather Jesus is saying that we belong with. The width word there means that we belong in proximity, in the space with, in dwelling with God. God sent Jesus so that we would know and see God pull up a space for us at that table and that we would know that we will not be left out in the dark or the cold in a state of loneliness. Jesus calls us his own. We belong with Jesus. We are his own. You are his own. Turn to the person next to you and make sure they know that they are Jesus' own. Tell them you are Jesus' own. Go ahead. You're Jesus' own. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's right. So now that we've established that, I ask kind of again, what does it mean to belong somewhere? or belong to a group. Again, this is kind of a follow-up, a part two, if you will, to last week's topic of invitation into beloved community. It's that next thing after invitation. Belonging is what you do when you're established and you've been invited and you've arrived and you ideally start to feel like you belong. This gets to the heart of the difference between being included, which is good, and knowing that you belong somewhere, being affirmed as belonging to a group and a community. One commentator on this Good Shepherd text illustrated this nuance with a story about one of her Hispanic colleagues working working in a primarily Caucasian descent establishment. The colleague said that they felt included, so there was no open hostilities, but it always felt like being a foster child forever, opposed to being fully adopted into the community. That's just one instance in one place, but because of this, they always felt like a welcomed outsider always on the fringe, but never completing that sense of belonging. All of this is to be a sermon of encouragement, a reminder that we are called to stay fresh in our practice of welcoming, inviting, and knitting together fully integrated communities. 
this encouragement that we receive from the Good Shepherd is aimed at dispelling complacency, letting our welcoming practices fall into a pattern of going through the motions, of going to that same table in coffee hour that we are used to going to. Because let's remember in the gospel text that Jesus says that we are His own, but also there are other sheep, other groups, other nations that are not part of this one, but that they're going to come and belong to in the ultimate family of God. Now, Jesus doesn't go into specifics there, but we can realize that we sometimes say, eh, those sheep over there, not part of our fold. But Jesus tells us, that's good. I called them good too, and I call them my own too. And so you can go ahead and realize, just because they're over there and you're over here, that's okay. And we want that to come together. We are called to follow Jesus in all the different ways of our life. Today, we highlight that aspect of Him that is shepherding and calling people to belong. The Good Shepherd calls us to follow Him, to follow His example, and so we become shepherds, whether we know anything about sheep or not. Part of that is learning how to shepherd and what or who to shepherd. We do this learning as part of our response to Jesus' call to us. We do this in tending to what and who we shepherd, tending to that sense of wel welcome and belonging we create together. We belong with Jesus. We belong with the creation God made for us. We belong with this community, this body of Christ, and we are to tend to all of those relationships so that they continue to grow and can be maintained. An example, again, for those Lord of the Rings fans out there, you can combine the caring of earth and community together. Good news, right? By thinking like Ents, that's E-N-T-S. For those who are not Lord of the Rings fans, let me explain. Ents were called the shepherds of the forest. See where I'm going here? Forest, earth. All right, good, good. Somebody's got my back, all right? Ents were this kind of tree-looking creatures, right, that were shepherds of the forest. They blended in, but they were called to be leaders of both the, those kinds of trees and then kind of trees that moved around. It's a whole thing. But the point is, Ents were a community that looked a little different from us, talked different than us, had different origins than us, but shared the sense of belonging with and in their home, and the sense to care for their home, tending and defending it. They never sought to own the community or the land or the things they tended. They reflected sentiments we find to be true in God not concerned with possession or ownership, but intensely and intimately focused on growing every kind of relationship. As French philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre said, so heaven is each other. Hell is separateness, uncommunicability, self-centeredness, lust for power, for riches, for fame. Heaven, on the other hand, is very simple and very hard. Caring about your fellow beings. Which seems to me to flow into this passage from James chapter 1. Post this on all the intersections, dear friends, 
lead with your ears, that's that listening part, follow up with your tongue, faith in action, and let anger strang- straggle alone in the rear. Let anger straggle alone in the rear. God's righteousness doesn't grow from human anger. So throw all spoiled virtue and cancerous evil right in the garbage. In simple humility, let our gardener, God, landscape you with the word, making a salvation garden of your life. Let our gardener, God, landscape you with the Word. That's capital capital W, Word. Making a salvation garden of your life. Let our shepherd, our good shepherd, direct your ways and show you to the green mission fields where you belong. With that in mind, I want to conclude and draw us again to the prayer of the day. Let us pray. O Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be made whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.